In this video, we'll see whether or not you can overland in something as ordinary as your grandma's Sunday runabout. And the Gambler 500 is the perfect event to find out. This is a 2000 Toyota Avalon that I purchased for exactly $500. It was the top of the line luxury sedan that you could get from Toyota before stepping into a Lexus. It's powered by a 3 liter quad cam V6 that makes 210 horsepower and 220 pound feet of torque. At least it did when it was new. And as a side note, if you remove the muffler, it sounds remarkably like a Nissan 350Z. This one came fully equipped with dual climate control, heated leather seats, a sunroof, cruise control, and two features that would prove quite valuable on our trip, traction control and vehicle stability control. And it even came with a 110 volt outlet for the back seats. So why was this thing so cheap? Well, for one, it does take a little while to get the key to work. Ah, there we go. For another thing, it wouldn't pass the emissions testing because it had the check engine light on. And I say had, because I managed to fix that with $30 in sensors from the junkyard. It also had a pretty cool misfire and would fall flat on its face if you tried to go full throttle. But a little swab with the Q-tip and some cleaner on the MAF sensor, now it revs up beautifully. So for $500, I got a comfortable, air-conditioned, luxurious gambler car, and uh, we just gotta see how it does off-road. There is one other little issue. It manages to leak an impressive amount of oil. So anybody that follows the Gambler 500 movement uh, knows that modifying your cars is uh, kind of a big part of it. I'm not really gonna do this. One of the things I was curious about was to see what you actually needed to do this kind of overlanding trip. So we're gonna be traveling on a section of the Oregon backcountry discovery route that goes from Oregon's central desert through the mountains to the Oregon coast. And I was curious to see if a completely stock family sedan could handle that trip. With my camping gear all loaded up, we hit the road early to meet up with our group and to make our way to the city of Crescent where the adventure begins. On the road. How fast am I going? I keep having to adjust my cruise control, so if you could maintain a more consistent speed, that'd be great. Thanks, Beetle Commander. Well, we just crossed over the pass. We're now about nine or 10 miles from Crescent Lake, which is not too far from where we officially are starting our adventure. Once we get to the city of Crescent, we're gonna gas up and then we're gonna find the start of our trail. And then the adventure really begins and we'll see how well this thing does. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go have some fun. What up, D? You know, I got some complaints. Yeah? My air conditioning's a little too cold sometimes. I gotta turn it down. I hate you. Adjust the temperature. No, no there's, there's no way. After fueling up, we made our way to the start of our trail, 
but before setting off, I had to add my first official sponsor sticker to make this old Toyota an official rally car. I brought offerings. Oh, sponsorships? Oh. Yeah. I like being symmetrical about my decorations and stickers. Look at that. Sponsored. The start of the trip goes pretty smooth, and I mean that literally because even the gravel roads are free of washboards. But we didn't have to go far on this road to find a cool spot to try out the capabilities of our vehicles. Massive play area! Oh, my car is not suited for this! I'm really concerned about these cheap Chinese tires on these rocks. This cinder pit quarry may be a little bunch for my Avalon, and killing it so early in the trip doesn't sound like a great idea. So I step aside and let the other guys do their thing. to cover so it's time to get back on the road. we were planning this trip there's one section of road that was making me nervous and that's this section that we saw on an episode of dirt every day i by far have the lowest clearance vehicle here priority number one don't lose the oil pan it's a hundred feet off the pavement. Yeah. I got an oil pan killing rock. Yeah, be careful of that one too. <laughs> a couple hundred yards down the road, we found an obstacle for the Avalon to prove it. Oh, sh All right, I have to pay attention now. Instinctively, I figured the best way to approach it was with a lot of throttle and no traction control. Well, that didn't work. So, let's find out what this 20-year-old traction control system can do. That was beautiful. It was lit up the whole time.
continued up the mountains with these sort of scattered obstacles for several miles before we finally began seeing signs of water and eventually the aptly named Summit Lake. Nice views. Too bad it was impossible to enjoy them. Away from water. Ah! <laughs> okay, yep. Sit rep. A lot of scraping, a lot of knocking, but uh, we've gotten through everything so far. Oh, and the mosquitoes are insane. So bad. There's so many of these swampy little ponds and creeks. So anytime you get out of the car, or I roll down the window to see something, just a swarm of them come in here. Really nice to camp here, but no. Uh, yeah, it's doing pretty good. The, uh, yeah, the one, those one guys we passed, he's like, oh, please tell me that's a rental car. <laughs> As we made our way down the other side of the mountains, the roads did eventually smooth out a bit, especially in comparison to what we had just been driving on. However, we did hit our first roadblock, literally. Is that the road we want? Yeah. I, I think we can go around though. Oh no, we're good. We can we can go this way and take a left when we hit a T and then we should it should just put us right back on that other road. Are you able to drag and reroute right now right now with no service? Uh yeah. Okay, yep, I think we're good. And I may have found a spot for us to camp tonight, too, because... Well, we probably got, what, another 20 miles, really, too many to camp, 70 miles a day. Yeah. So we gotta, we gotta get going. Hopefully there's no mosquitoes. We got it. Bug doing all right, boy. The bug is amazing. This thing just eats this stuff up, man. It's so good. <laughs> and the Avalon. <laughs> The traction control in this thing is like... It's its pretty cool. I can't believe it. I'm surprised it's actually like smart traction control. Some traction controls just just kill power when it slips. And for a car that's... This is actually grabbing wheels or front ones. Which is funny because it is throwing an ABS code. With our new route mapped out, we spent a couple more hours on smoother gravel roads, which meant we could pick up the pace to try and make it to our campsite at a reasonable time. At least that was the plan. We're gonna get to that. Right. First one to bust out the jack. I heard it knocking and I was like, got it. <laughs> it seems to hit on the right side, but nothing on the left. The left seems fine. While we're stepped. Really though, who stops in the middle of the road and says, this is a great spot to shoot? If 
Eventually we found ourselves back on the paved road, and since it was later in the afternoon, we started keeping an eye out for a spot to camp. Donnie, has anybody ever told you you sound like Hank from King of the Hill? No. Really? What do you have to do? It's amazing. It didn't take too long to find an old elk camp at the bottom of a gravel road, and that'll suit us well enough for tonight. And while everybody's pitching tents and setting up camp, I'm going to prepare my unorthodox sleeping situation. What's more overland than sleeping inside your own car? Look at that. Didn't cool down at all. No. I got like three hours of good sleep. All right, we're on the move now. Day two. Welcome to what top? Hopefully. I'm gonna hope <laughs> the road isn't so bad. Yesterday was a little hairy, but we got a long ways to go. I think we still got like 60 miles to do today, um, and almost none of that is pavement. So, yeah, hopefully the Avalon can keep up the good streak. I managed to scamper over the uh, biggest log that we've come across so far and it wasn't that big it was maybe eight or ten inches and I think that's probably about the limit because both me and Skyler and the new beetle were scraping our subframes on it and uh, the road seems to be getting even thicker and less traveled so hopefully we don't run into too much more of that Oh. That's a lot. Without a chainsaw. I got a saw, that little one that rips. How far into it is it? it dude, it's non-stop. Is it? It's non-stop. It just keeps going. It's just non-stop of this all the way down for as long as I can see. That's what I think from the storm. Unfortunately, these downed trees force us to backtrack for over an hour back to the pavement because this gravel road was the last one that stuck close to our original route. Hi, watch out. But it wasn't a total loss. This road did have some epic views. I've been in this. Uh... This is interesting. When we made it back to the pavement, I topped off my tank with the Rotopax for some bonus overland points. The temperature outside has been something everybody has been battling. I mean, I had really good air conditioning, but the beetle was starting to overheat, and the farther we drove into the valley, the hotter it got. So when we spotted this epic looking swimming hole, we had to stop. Oh. That truck's been 
pronounce them seriously. Huh? I, I yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it smells hot. Well, it's got a lot of weight on it. Going uphill. Hey, don't fat shame the truck. <laughs> if it were a Chevy. Dude, I know, they get you. They get you. What? The fish. They you nibble? Stand in one spot. There's a ton of them. How could you eat? They're swimming up your feet right now. <laughs> How funny is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see them in the video. That's they awesome. like they like tickle you. <laughs> if you just if you just like bite it, you dive in. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm rolling. It's so good. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> what was that shy about? Yeah. <laughs> just do it. Ah! <laughs> okay, now you're right. <laughs> the timing belt and all. Ain't on the bed. Oh god, it feels so good. Up to Sutherland, and then that gets us back on track. So, the route we were going to take is, uh, turns out it's private property now. The logging company is as close to all okay, access. Well, let's do that then. We can restock. So, we're going to be hitting pavement and Roseburg, and then we to can hop on the road and just, uh, we're going to be hitting pavement to Sutherland and then where we can kind of rejoin our original course. So we got some highway driving to do. How far till Southern? Uh, not that far. Looks like we are now diving into the coast range. Hopefully. We don't run into any more roadblocks, closed roads, anything like that. And we can find a good spot to camp tonight so we can hit the beach by lunch tomorrow. Road is still paved. How is this pavement? <laughs> this is crazy. So far, we've driven on a challenging road with rocks and obstacles and mud. We drove on a lot of gravel for a long ways just to hit a dead end. And now we're driving on this beautiful road we had no idea would be paved because it winds through the mountains. It's overgrown, but with golden hour coming on, I got the windows down, sunroof open. The only person who's probably enjoying the scenery and everything more than me is Skylar because he's got his roof down. What a beautiful road. If you can enjoy a road like that in an Avalon with blown out struts, it's a quality road. Eventually the nice pavement did give way to some more gravel and some more beautiful scenery. Just on the other side of this hill, we did manage to find another good spot to set up camp for the night. This looks 
not like dog food at all. It's so fun. Not my thing. left the dirt road behind, we're back on pavement, so we must be close to Coos Bay. The final part of our journey is something I'm sure the Avalon is no match for. So I hop in one of the other cars and we spend the day having fun, getting stuck, getting rescued, and relaxing after our journey. While we did spend more time on the pavement than I expected, it was definitely an adventure worth doing. Now it's time to make our way up the coast, get home, and maybe even make the Avalon a bit more off-road worthy. 